What's going on everyone? It's Jaronism, back with another video for you today. This video should separate the men from the fanboys, the wheat from the chaff, and the upright from the upside down. When shown the evidence, well first you should verify it, always doing your own research so you reach your own conclusions, but once you see that what I'm showing you is the truth, I think you have two choices. First you can admit that there is some serious problems and then join in this fight for truth, exposing the liars and spreading the word and trying to end this time of deception. Or two, you can stay asleep, write some hateful comment. This way you feel better about that lie you're living, continue fighting on behalf of the liars, doing their dirty work, and in the process continue to hold back humanity, while we all continue to be scammed by those whose goal is to deceive and dun down each and every one of us until not a single, rational, or thinking human being remains. H.L. Mencken said in December 1919, the most dangerous man to any government is the man who is able to think things out for himself. Without regard to the prevailing superstitions and taboos, almost inevitably, he comes to the conclusion that the government he lives under is dishonest, insane, and intolerable. And so, if he is a romantic, he tries to change it. And even if he's not romantic, personally, he is very apt to spread discontent among those who are. The globe is in trouble because once that alarm goes off, and you wipe away the gunk from your eyes, and finally, you can see the truth, there's no going back. You can't unsee the truth. You can't reapply the grogginess and the gunk. You're awake. And while you still might have to decide what to wear and what route to take to work, one thing you do know is that you can't go back to sleep. So what is it that you will know or realize by the end of this video? Well, you should realize that Antarctica is not what we've been told. So let's get it on with the evidence. Now think for some pretend second here that we're on a ball in the endless space spinning on an axis such place would have two very interesting locations, a North Pole and a South Pole. The North Pole is pretty well documented, and there may be more to find there, but the place that we're going to discuss today is the southern continent, the South Pole. The Antarctic Treaty prevents countries from laying claim, prevents any kind of military action, and prevents you and I from going and taking a look. Luckily, we can review videos and webcam footage to get an idea of what exactly is going on down there. Now, let's say we are trying to prove the globe or trying to prove it's flat. Should be very, very easy, right? I mean, on a globe, we would have a 24-hour sun in the southern summer. That means that the sun would circle the continent. That's quite different from the flat Earth model where the sun circles the entire Earth from above, and since Antarctica is around the outside, well that doesn't include a circling sun, at least not around you at the bottom continent. Okay, let me show you what the difference between the two options would be. First, we're here at neve.com, and the link is in the description if you want to check this out. And for someone at the pole, this is what we should see. I'm in Antarctica. It's uh, December 19th. And we're going to start moving the clock here ahead just hour by hour to see what the sun does or should do on a globe. We're at uh, midnight here, so we're pumping ahead two, three, four o'clock. And you'll see the sun just does a 360 around the southern continent, which uh, should be really evident and great proof of the globe. Show a couple of uh, video camera feeds or webcam feeds of that sun doing exactly that and shadows making a 360 degree turn. And there's your proof, flat earth dead in the water. So here we have a, another globe perspective, the sun standing still there on the left, and the bottom of the bogus ball would be rotating clockwise, um, causing the sun to shine 24 hours a day on the South Pole, which is uh, vastly different than if we are looking at a flat Earth, whereas a flat Earth with the sun making the trek uh, daily around the Earth, somebody who is standing near the South Pole or in Antarctica would always see the sun coming from their northeast and heading off to their northwest 
and so they would see something a little bit more uh, like this image which uh, shows you exactly what I believe we are seeing on the top there I put a little view of what it would look like from Antarctica and you can see the uh, Sun starting in the upper right and traveling to the left and heading out towards the northwest okay so we now understand what we should see if the globe were the case if the Sun actually circles the southern continent and the earth was a globe then this should be absolutely easy to prove right there would be a ton of evidence of this easy to prove fact isn't that right we should have video footage in abundance of the Sun circling the continent causing the shadows to do 360 degree turns around an item I hope you agree with me if you're capable of using your mind and that since video recording has been around that there is no reason to not have numerous examples of this so-called 24-hour Sun so let's take a look and see what we find first up a South Pole video a 24-hour time-lapse oh good 360 degree shadows let's watch here it comes alright so here we are at the South Pole no way of uh, faking this video huh but let's watch anyway and see so we have some flags starting around 9 o'clock heading towards 6 o'clock and uh, then they'll be heading up from 6 towards 3 uh, watch the uh, tracks there in front of these small flags. Just keep an eye on those tracks here in a second and make sure you note where they're at. And we'll see that the front flags are rotating around almost to 3 o'clock now. The back flags look a little bit questionable if they are even moving in a circle. And so now we're at 3 o'clock, so we're halfway there. And we'll be heading towards uh, 12 o'clock, but oops, here comes some bad weather. And what was that? They just took the flags. All right, so those flags are gone, um, and you can look at the ones at the top that do look like they're moving, but if you look for the tracks at the bottom, it looks to me like a completely different day. Certainly not proof of a 24-hour circling sun. Not by a long shot. All right, let's move on. Let's check some webcam footage. Well, here we are, folks, 90 degrees south, Amundsen Scott South Pole Base and Station. And here we have a ceremonial marker erected by everyone's favorite traitors to humanity, the Freemasons. Can we give them a round of applause? Now, settle down, settle down. Come on, they're just like us. Only dirt bags. All right, so here we go. We're looking at this webcam footage. I'll leave the link in the description. We're looking from February 2012 all the way to April 2014. Start at this one here. And let's watch the shadow as it does its 360, proving the globe. Or maybe not. We can watch the shadows on all these webcam videos. And we can see that never do the shadows complete a 360 degree turn. In fact, never is there a video of an entire day. We could look up here and see at the time that it will go through in 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2. Then it will skip to 10 for no reason. Remember, these are the webcam videos supposedly for the purpose of showing us the 24-hour sun at the South Pole. And we can see that the sun goes by the horizon there, right to left. But does the sun go behind us? So watch these shadows, and you'll see them start, grow, and then skip. Start, grow, and skip. So what they're showing us is proof of absolutely nothing other than the fact that they have edited these webcam videos. You may also notice that the shadows start long, then become short in the middle, and then go long again, which would be the case on a flat earth map where the sun is coming from your northeast and far away, which would cause a long shadow. As it passes the horizon, it would be even with you and cause a short shadow, and as it leaves, heading off to your northwest, it would again cause a long shadow. But one thing should be evident, that these are all edited and cut. So again, you can watch the sun as it comes from your northeast, across the horizon, and then takes off to the northwest. The sun does not go behind us as would be required in a 360 degree sun path around the southern continent. Clearly, this shows us, if anything, that trickery is afoot. And this is not just one of the months, this is not just two of the months, it's not just five of the months. This is every month that they have a webcam video for, 
they have edited and cut out part of the day. And these are during the main months, which are January, December, and November, the southern summer. In this video, let's watch this green flag down below. You'll see it starting around maybe 7 o'clock, 8 o'clock, rotates around to about 2 o'clock, and then resets. Rotate around, reset. This is obviously a lie. This is obviously not what's going on. Why don't we get to see the sun do a 360 degree turn around the southern continent? Now remember, this would be pretty good evidence and proof of the globe because it doesn't work on a flat earth to see the sun go around the southern continent. However, on a globe, it is something that should be really evident and should be seen in every single summer video from the South Pole. But again, watch the flag. It'll start around 8 o'clock, rotate around until it gets to 2, and then reset and start over. This should be a huge eye-opener. should be something that screams to you, fraud, fake, set up, contrived. This is not what we would see if the sun went around the southern continent. So now let's think. If the globe requires a certain phenomenon and it is required for six months of the year and every single year, what sense would it make if we never get to see that phenomenon? Use your head here. What would that mean? To me it means that it simply isn't the truth, that it isn't the case. We don't see what we're supposed to see. So what else are we supposed to surmise besides that what we're told is not the truth? We could look up here and watch the time and you'll see we're at January 14th and the time goes 1, 2, 3, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 21, 22, 23, 24, 1, 2, 3, 10, 11. So watch the times. Again, the link to these webcam uh, time-lapse videos is in the description. You can go watch them all yourself and see that you have been terribly fooled. Now, if we watch these shadows here on this purple flag, you'll see what I'm talking about, about the shadow starting out extremely long, getting extremely small, and then getting extremely long again, which again makes no sense on a globe model, makes all the sense on a flat earth model because the sun is coming from your northeast and far away, causing a long shadow. Then it crosses the horizon, causing a short shadow, and then escapes to the northwest, which would again cause another long shadow. So I would love it if somebody, anybody, would tell me what reason could they possibly have for editing these webcam time-lapse videos in such a manner. Why not show us one complete day where the shadow simply does a complete circle? In fact, they should be able to show us probably at the very minimum two months straight. That's 60 days or more where the sun does nothing but circle the southern continent. In fact, it's supposed to be more. But at the very least, this is at Amundsen Scott South Pole Station there should be non-stop continuous shadows circling these flags. But is that what we get? Or do we get cut up and contrived fake webcam footages? Or at least edited? This is just a quick diagram in case you don't quite understand what I'm saying about the shadows changing from long to short to long. If you think of the sun starting in your upper right here, its shadow would cause a long shadow of the stick that you see on the left. And as the sun moves to the left, when it's in the middle there, it would cause a short shadow, which is right in front of us on the bottom. And as it continues off to the northwest, which is on your upper left, that sun would cause a long shadow on the right, on the bottom right. And that's what I'm talking about when I say that the shadows grow from long to short to long. So I uh, emailed the head of the Australian Antarctic Division there. And she wrote back and basically said, uh, 
that the webcams at their Antarctic stations are subject to very limited internet connections, and frequent interruptions and dropouts are commonplace as the outages due to weather are extreme. Very slow bandwidth means we are unable to have constant streaming video. The time lapses you see on our site are stitched together from photos generated every 15 minutes and basically saying that uh, there'd be no way that they could have uh, data from a whole entire day. Uh, just taking a look at Moss and Station's current time lapse, for example, the images are being recorded overnight and nothing appears to be missing. <clears throat> if you do notice anything absent on any of our webcams, please let us know the specifics so we can investigate any potential faults or even maybe restore images where possible. So I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? Uh, why don't you have complete day's videos? You're cutting them yourself. So I wrote back, and she responded with, Hi, Jaren, I've spoken to our web manager, who was not available earlier. He let me know that some frames are actually missing by design. Because the webcams were set up so long ago, he had forgotten about a script he had written to omit frames that are mostly all black to save on space bandwidth, and overall quality of the video. Chunks of time with just black screens are a bit of a waste, he said, that if there is any reasonable light source in the image, then the image would not be omitted, and that the missing frames are based only on the amount of light in the image. Thanks for your email. We will now add this to the FAQ for future webcam visitors. And if you can't tell, this is complete and total horseshit, because what we were just looking at was the summer months when there is no night supposed to be 24 hours of sun going around why are those images omitted so i said jen i still think you aren't quite understanding what i'm saying if you have time lapse webcam footage from the amundsen scott base then why is there no 24 hour sun video you guys have cut and edited every single video why it makes no sense with your answers below about black screens please explain for example watch all videos for november december january 2011 2012 2013 and the most recent email which came earlier this week said, Hi, Jaron. The Amundsen Scott Station is an American facility, and for all inquiries regarding their webcam footage, you need to contact them. The information and explanation that Jen provided below still applies to ours. Kind regards, Denise. So I have emailed all the people at the NOAA and the NSF, and we were waiting to see if they've got anything new to say besides just the same nonsense responses. So again, I've sped up this camera footage just a little bit to get you some more views of these time-lapse footages, but it's all much of the same. You'll see shadows going halfway around and then resetting. You can watch the time in every single video to see that never is a whole day played. Sometimes it actually appears that the shadow comes very close to doing uh, some sort of a 360-degree turn, but regardless, you can look at the time and see that at minimum, eight to ten hours is cut out of every video so how could the shadow even be coming close to doing a 360 if you're cutting out a third or more of the day again this is good evidence here if you watch the purple flag start out very long then it gets short as it goes in front of you and then becomes long as it resets and starts over so as I said even if you watch that little igloo on the left it may look really close to a 360 degree turn but by looking at the time, 10 hours are cut out of that day. That just tells me that these have been edited. So, these are not accurate portrayals of reality. Again, the biggest and most obvious point here is that if it was a globe that we live on, then what they are trying to show us would be 1. Easy, 2. Occur daily, and 3. Plainly evident. And it is none of those. It is. It looks like they're trying to cut it up. It looks like they're trying to portray something that isn't actually happening. And it looks like they're trying to fool us. Let's pay attention to something here. Watch this shadow as it rotates towards the upper left of the screen. And notice the shadow in this video coincides with the sun. Not the opposite as would be required by, you know, physics. And optics. The shadow should be opposite of the sun not rotating in tandem with it. Again, more evidence of extreme trickery, extreme editing. They're simply trying to sell us something that isn't reality. So, how much more will it take for these globe believers to stop in their tracks and just think, you know what, this is strange, and to stop making excuses 
for liars who have been deceiving humanity for hundreds of years. Because we've still got the same people, and you know who I'm talking about, who will watch this footage after that webcam, after that webcam, and will still believe in NASA and in science and believe that we would never be lied to, all because they're afraid of the implications. Well, it's time to face facts, and the facts say that we're being lied to. So, you can keep making excuses. You can keep just calling me names. Put your hateful comment in the comment section. You can keep thinking that there's no way we could have been lied to. You can keep thinking that people have known that we live on a globe for thousands of years. You can keep bowing to those who deceive the world, and you can keep fighting on behalf of your handlers who are laughing at us all for two reasons. One, because they have fooled the world, and two, because you argue on their behalf. That is pretty funny, to have convinced people of a lie so strongly that you have the people who are lied to defending those liars and arguing on their behalf. It's time we wake up and see what's right in front of our face, and that's evident and evidence of something other than the globe we were all taught. If it's a globe, then someone show me the six months of video footage of the shadows doing a 360 degree turn at the South Pole Station. Should be easy, should be in abundance, should be evident, and should be all over the place. Yet we find none. And yet you will still sit there and argue on these clowns behalf. So show me the evidence of this 24 hour sun. Show me the time lapse videos that should be in abundance yet can't be found anywhere. Now you may find a video out there somewhere that shows one day of the sun doing something like a 360 degree turn, but where are they in abundance? Here's a video someone sent me. I don't want to use it for copyright reasons, so I have a link in the description below and I'll point out three things for you to watch when watching this video. I'm sure you've actually seen this video before, the one with the watch in the lower left hand corner, but take a look first at the shadows or the lack thereof of these mountains. Then look at the shadows of these poles or sticks off in the distance. And lastly, look at the shadow of this huge mountain. And finally, watch the sun rays that come from this sun and tell me this is reality. Now, someone is clearly playing stupid here, folks. We're told and taught as youngsters that Antarctica is a continent on the globe bottom and we've just looked at tons of time-lapse footage and in every single video someone has cut out and removed the one damn thing anyone would want to see. Can anyone explain this? Can anyone explain this lack of evidence? Does it make any sense at all? Any at all? Does it? No, the sphere with a South Pole makes no sense, does it? A plane doesn't dip for the curvature, does it? It's concrete. The globe model has no truth, does it? So anyway, anyone got any good ideas of what to do with this globe model? <laughs> I totally agree. Get him a body bag. It's over. He's done. He's got nothing left. Hey! Stay focused. Whoa, Miyagi's right. Gotta stay focused. I mean, sure, the globe is having issues, but so many people think of it as fact simply because someone told them. No time lapse footage of the sun doing 360 degrees around the southern continent, but it's still believed as fact. All right, staying focused. The Freemasons live by a slogan, nothing is true, everything is permitted. So that they can keep us all in the dark regarding our true potential. And one of their very best tools is the southern continent of Antarctica. They used the Freemason Richard Byrd to push the lie. They erected the geographical South Pole as a ritual. I mean, Byrd had taken many trips to the North and South Pole. And in case you didn't know, his brother, Harry Byrd, 
was a governor and a senator and did all of this work from 1916 to 1965. Both of them born to one of the wealthiest families in Virginia and a member of the Federal Lodge No. 1 in Washington, D.C., these men will lie for each other and go to bat for each other and all of them will back each other no matter what. In fact, all of Byrd's travels were financed by John D. Rockefeller. Now, who knows how deep Richard Byrd goes in all this and exactly to what depth he was involved. He died or was killed not too long after Operation Deep Freeze and his only son, Richard Byrd Jr., was found dead in a warehouse almost a month after his family had put him on a train. Every Mason will tell you that the art of Freemasonry is a glorious example of a most shining and noble morality, yet it's all kept a secret. They tell the lies that keep the world in argument. Now, for some evidence of this Freemason trickery, look no further than the current Guinness record holder for the North-South Surface Navigation, Sir Ran Fiennes. You can click here for an entire video showing that there is no north-south circumnavigation. And after you've watched this video and that video, if you still believe in the model we were all taught, well, then no evidence exists that will ever get you away from the lie that you love so much. Of course you know about Freemason Robert Falcon Scott. Of course this is where we get the name of Amundsen Scott from. You've also heard of the Ross Sea, I presume which was named after yet another Freemason, Sir James Clark Ross. How about Sir Edward Hillary? Yes, another Freemason, member of the first expedition to cross Antarctica and reach the South Pole by land, doing so from 1955 to 1958. Or we can look at Elisha Kane, who was just another Freemason, also an explorer that is famous enough to have a crater on the moon named after him, and he did his journeys in 1853. Of course, in 1909, Robert E. Peary reached the North Pole and in 1911 Roald Amundsen placed the flag at the South Pole. Yes, Peary and Amundsen were both Freemasons. And of course you have another Mason, Sir Ernest Henry Shackleton, initiated in Navy Lodge number 2612 in 1901, passed in 1911, and raised in 1913. He separated from his crew. What follows is an amazing story of survival and heroism when the party was finally rescued and received on a ship captained by, yes, another Freemason, Luis Pardo. The list goes on and on, full of these Freemason tricks, these Freemason lies. And it doesn't just end at the North and South Pole. You see, our history is littered with Freemasons and their lies. In all walks of life, in all areas of study, of course, you should recognize that uh, Charles Darwin was, of course, a Freemason. Imagine that one. What about uh, Charles Lindbergh, right? First to fly across the Atlantic Ocean? Perhaps. How about the reason kidnapping is a federal crime? Well, this is his doing and the reason it's now headed by the FBI. All of that as a result of the Lindbergh case. Yes, in one of the earliest hoaxes or false flags, do some research on Charles Lindbergh and his child being kidnapped. You'll see for yourself what kind of government ran this country in 1927. And maybe he was the first to cross the Atlantic solo. I can't say that he wasn't. But what I can say is the flight taking 33 hours seems a bit suspicious. And as the media reported, I'm very sure that during the flight across the ocean, through snow and sleet, he slept. You heard me. First solo flight from New York to London, the man slept. The feat had already been attempted six times, and all six men never made it. They all died. Yet Charles Lindbergh, the Freemason, he did it, while dodging storm clouds at 10,000 feet and dodging waves as low as 10 feet. He also found time to sleep. Not a worry. Yep, those Masons are amazing indeed. It's like the Mason who went to the moon, and on his first step off the limb, he pissed on the moon. And when he was ready to leave, the first time ever that it would be attempted, he said, Roger Houston, we're number one on the runway. Circuit breakers. So all in all, the deception here is becoming clear. Why would there be no footage of a 24-hour sun? Where's the proof? Where's the proof that we live on a ball? Go look at images from 70 degrees north versus 70 degrees south. On a globe, 
they should be nearly identical. But you'll see that the south is a barren wasteland of ice and penguins, and the north is filled with trees, flowers, bushes, deer, bears, squirrels, elk, and everything else you can imagine. Why do all of these South Pole and Antarctic flights and planes have no windows? Is there something they don't want people to see, perhaps? Like, what's that sun doing? Why is it when you look at the Worldview 4 satellite images, which cover the United States in a pattern like this, stop in Antarctica like this, in a very circular pattern? Now, do I claim to know how it all works? Hell no. I've been lied to my whole life, like all of you. It certainly could be something like this, or there could be a southern continent like this. There could be no outer ice wall and more land north and south. There could be Shambhala. There could be the Tibetan tradition of White Island and the Eternal Land. Universally through time, we've had legends that speak of Atlantis, or a sacred land located at the navel of the earth. Hindu mythology tells us about Maru as the mystical mountain of the earth's center. Like the Egyptians, the Indians conceived of a dwelling place of the gods known as Samaru. Hebrew legends speak of a place in the north called Luz. Many ancient lands speak of a first continent known as the imperishable sacred land and is the most mysterious of the seven continents. It is said to be located in the region of the North Pole. This sacred land is stated never to have shared the fate of the other continents because it is the only one whose destiny it is to last from the beginning to the end. It is the cradle of the first man and the dwelling of the last divine mortal. Of this mysterious and sacred land very little can be said except perhaps according to a poetical expression in one of the commentaries that the pole star has its watchful eye upon it. Buddhist texts say that Shambhala can be reached only by a long and difficult journey across a wilderness of deserts and mountains and warn that only those who are called to have the necessary spiritual preparation will be able to find it. One text says that the kingdom of Shambhala is round, but it is usually depicted as an eight-petaled lotus blossom. The modern theosophical tradition too recognizes that Shambhala is a real place. Shambhala, although no erudite orientalist has yet succeeded in locating it geographically, is an actual land or district, the seat of the greatest brotherhood of spiritual adepts and their chiefs of earth today. From Shambhala at certain times in the history of the world, or more accurately, of our own fifth root race, come forth from the messengers or envoys of spiritual and intellectual work among men. It is surrounded by an Akashic veil of invisibility, and an army of airplanes might fly over it and not see it. In it are gathered some of the most valuable records of the human race. There, surrounded by the greatest and most evolved human beings, the silent watcher of Earth has his invisible abode. Maru, which was the Olympus of the Indians, is said to be situated in the center or navel of the Earth. It was guarded by serpents, which watched the entrance to the realm of secret knowledge. According to tradition, it was the land of bliss of the earliest Vedic times. Occult teachings place it at the very center of the North Pole, pointing it out as the site of the first continent over the entire Earth. H.P. Blavansky states that Maru is not the fabulous mountain in the navel or center of the Earth, but its roots and its foundations are in that navel, though it is in a far north itself. It connects it with the central land that never perishes. Occult teaching also corroborates the popular tradition, which asserts the existence of a fountain of life in the bowels of the Earth and in the North Pole. It is the blood of the Earth, the electromagnetic current, which circulates through all of the arteries and which is said to be found stored in the navel of the earth. In the book Paradise Found, William Warren writes, the earliest inhabitants of the Tigro-Euphrates Basin located the center of the earth, not in their own midst, but in a far off land of sacred associations where the holy house of God is situated, a land into the heart whereof man has not yet penetrated, a place underneath the overshadowing world tree the Chaldean account of Genesis we read, Human beings the great gods created, and in the earth the gods created for them a dwelling. In the midst of the earth they grew up and became great and increased in number. Seven kings, brothers of the same family, Iranian, Indian, Chinese, Scandinavian, and Aztec literature also refer to the ambiguous location of the center of the earth. 
The Japanese paradise was situated on top of the globe and at the same time at the center of the earth. It was called the island of the congealed drop. Its first roof pillar was the earth's axis and over it was the pivot of the vault of heaven. Similarly, the Chinese terrestrial paradise was also round in form and is described not only as at the center of the earth, but also as directly under Shang Te's heavenly palace, which is declared to be in the pole star and is sometimes called the palace of the center. The Egyptians located their Ta Nidr, or land of the gods, in the extreme north. Today there is an echo of these ancient traditions in the fact that children send notes to Santa Claus or Father Christmas in his wonderland at the North Pole, asking for gifts. The Eskimos have legends that they came from a fertile land of perpetual sunshine in the north. In Psalm 48.2 of the Bible, Mount Zion is said to be in the far north. And in Ezekiel 28.13-14, Eden, the Garden of God, is placed on the holy mountain of God. In Hebrew tradition, the primeval Eden is sometimes said to be at the center of the earth. According to the Hindu Kerma Purana, an island called Shaveta Dipta, or White Island, lays in the northern sea. More recently, we have even more polar puzzles as far as the open polar sea. Many 19th century explorers believe that beyond the belt of pack ice at the perimeter of the Arctic Ocean, there was an open polar sea and possibly continental land as well. In 1827, an expedition led by Edward Perry ventured far north of Spitsbergen over ice and along leads of open water. As they sledged north, the ice field became lighter and more fissured, and they eventually found themselves on the edge of what seemed to be a vast open polar sea, containing only a few scattered pieces of ice. While attempting to reach the North Pole in 1871 to 1873, two young Austrian explorers, Karl Weyprecht and Julius Payer, discovered the islands of Franz Josef Land and came to believe that they were the outliners of a continental landmass. Lieutenant George Washington DeLong hoped to find this land and in 1879 he sailed in the Jeannette through the Bering Straits into the Arctic Ocean, planning to take advantage of the warm, north-flowing currents which he believed would open a way through the pack ice. However, in June 1881 his ship sank in the pack ice northeast of the new Siberian islands a tragedy which DeLong and many of his men did not survive. Early Arctic explorers reported seeing birds and animals moving north as winter was setting in, instead of going south, and inferred that they were headed to a warm land that must lie in the north. Perry once experienced a heavy fall of black dust in Greenland and thought it might be volcanic dust from the unexplored land to the north. In 1904, Dr. R.A. Harris of the U.S. Coast and Geodetic Survey published an article explaining why he believed that there had to be a large body of undiscovered land or shallow water in the polar basin northwest of Greenland. He argued that the prevailing currents seemed to indicate the deflection by an unknown large landmass lying in this approximate area, that the Eskimos living on the northern fringes of the Arctic Ocean had a tradition that a landmass existed to the north and that the disruption of the tides north of Alaska indicated a moderating effect explainable only by intervening land. Various Arctic explorers actually reported seeing land in the distance, though it should be noted that visibility can be poor and mirages are very common in this area. Have you ever heard of Crocker Land? Another famous disappearing land was called Crocker Land, discovered by Peary. He saw it on the 24th of June 1906 from atop a 2,000 foot mountain situated behind Cape Colgate in northern Greenland. Peary says that through his binoculars he was able to make out apparently a little more distinctly, the snow-clad summits of a distant land in the northwest above the ice horizon, Peary estimated that Crocker Land lay 120 miles from the northern coast of Axel Heiberg Island. How about Bradley Land? Frederick A. Cook stated that on his journey to the North Pole in 1908, he looked for Crocker Land but did not find it at the location given by Peary. However, he said he seen a mountainous ice-clad land slightly further from the shore, which he named Bradley Land. He saw it to the west of his line of march, north across the pack, on the 30th of March 1908, and again 31st of March. Prior to his attempt at the pole, Cook expressed the common belief that land would be found north of the Arctic Ocean. Jam Leprecht takes quite a different view on Cook and Peary and the controversy surrounding them. Leprecht speculates that the land had been magnified horizontally, nevertheless, for the mirage to extend over a third or more of the horizon, 
Without any noticeable degradation in brightness, the land itself would still have to be enormous. Lamprecht believes that Cook's photo of Bradley Land may also be a telescopic mirage, probably of the easternmost extension of Crocker Land, which he thinks is located on the Earth's outer surface, but is being covered up because it lies too close to the pole or hole. He thinks that Keenan Land also could be a telescopic mirage of the same gigantic polar continent, seen at a distance of over 900 miles. Lamprecht also believes the polar land and hole might have been discovered in 1926 when Amundsen, Ellsworth, and Nobile made their transpolar flight from Spitsbergen to Alaska, but instead of publicizing their discoveries, they supposedly went straight to the military and were sworn to secrecy. If there is any land or polar opening in the region of the North Pole, they would surely interfere with the drift of pack ice. In this regard, Wally Herbert makes an interesting observation about his experience on the Transarctic Expedition. We began to feel that there was some obstruction along the imaginary line which describes a circle around the pole at a radius of 260 miles. A hump, perhaps, over which the ice drifting north cannot pass. Nansen had faced a similar problem during his epic drift in the Fram. After the first 18 months, it had become evident that the 13-man crew of the Fram were unlikely to come any closer to the pole than 300 miles unless they left the warmth and safety of the ship and set out on foot. Although it is often said that the Arctic Ocean and seafloor have been thoroughly explored, it should be borne in mind that this ocean is one and a half times the size of the United States of America. So the possibility of a small opening or island with a tunnel having gone undiscovered cannot be absolutely ruled out. And as far as the possibility of a cover-up is concerned, well, it's worth noting that according to some mystical and esoteric traditions, certain sacred areas of the earth are protected and concealed by the exercise of occult powers. Many people have asked about the 24-hour sun in the south. And while we know that there is no 24-hour sun, we don't know that there's no 24-hour light. If you take a look at a couple of these images, you'll see that if we put anything past these guys, that would be a mistake. The ability to easily reflect or deflect the sunlight, or could it simply be an atmospheric effect? So do I know the answer? Nope. We need everybody doing the research. So the point is, we've been lied to. And step one should be pointing out the lies and exposing the liars. Then we will have people everywhere searching for the truth. So is there an ice wall? Where does it expand to? Is there more land south like the Iron Republic? Or is there a paradise north like the Garden of Eden? The answers are there for us to find once we realize that we live in a lie constructed by Freemasons, Jesuits, Jews, and the priest class. And now, add to the mix, scientists, astronomers, physicists, and more. Not because they are hiding it purposely, but because they are too proud and too blind to look into what we're saying. You don't live on a ball flying magically through space. Be kind. Don't lie. Open your mind. There's truth inside. This has been Jaronism. Like this video. Share this video. Till next time. Peace.